Wow, Maltre, it's so amazing to have you here. I'm so happy. Good evening, sir. Good morning. I'm not sure Good what morning. is it. Well, it depends if you were Be in Hoffman Uzbekistan do. over the weekend. Well, I just got back from, uh, you know where. Well, yeah, it was, from an, amazing, it was an amazing trip right here. Amazing. Um, everybody knows you as a singer. I'm sure that your, your siblings know you as a singer. And it must be that you invited me because you think, like everybody else, that have a lot of money, successful, guilt. <laughs> <laughs> actually, is that the case? I don't want to let you down, but no, I actually invited you here because <laughs> I think that behind the success that you've had as a singer that everyone already knows about, there's so much that people that are wondering how to go about doing things can learn. I think it would be important to no, It's very back. interesting. He's talking about my father, Shlita Zangizintishak. When he came to America after World War II, he was, he was in the concentration camps for five, six years. Actually, he saved his life by singing. Oh. And uh, he landed a position as a chazan by Rabbi J.J. Hecht, Oliver Sholem. Rabbi J.J. Hecht was a uh, radio personality in those days. He had a program called the anti shmad program. Mm -hmm. And he, my father, as his chazan, said to him, Rab David, if you ever want to be anything in America, you got to record. Wow. And he was the one that pushed him to do his first album in the late 1950s. Quiet. And uh, he did first two Chazonish records, and then he finally did the first famous Hasidic album, which Ada Yemaz, everybody has, Low, whoa, whoa, say, whoa, she, 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 it's still and, uh, and actually, he was the, the, the first uh, Hasidic, uh, after Chazonis, he was the first Hasidic album at the same time as Rabin and Schenker recorded in those days. Oh, wow. Now, the, uh, the, the um, recording industry has changed dramatically from the late 1950s till today. They didn't have any say. of this when you were recording, right? Um, <laughs> no. <nah. laughs> they didn't have any of this. <laughs> My father recorded the first Hasidic album, the Lois Avoshi album, which sold in those days 50,000 copies, which was wow. like insane. You're talking about the late yeah. 50s, a, a, a Yiddish album. He recorded the entire album, music, choir, himself as a soloist, in five hours. Oh, wow. Tell that to anybody today that does recordings in the studio, and they'll, they'll say impossible. But that's the way it was. So and there was no second chances. It was all one shot. Because it was basically a mono recording. Two tracks, but it wasn't really stereo. It was, it was, no, it was 40 days of stereo. And uh, that was it. Five hours, a complete album. Can you find that recording machine in the Jewish uh, Museum of History? <laughs> <laughs> that would be a very interesting thing to see with all the technology we have. Many people don't. Today's day and age, like. we sit in the studio for weeks and months and, and uh, endless hours. And uh, I, mean, I was Baruch Hashem lucky. Like close to 15 years ago, I decided to rather than going to a studio into the city every day, I created my own stu my own studio, my own recording studio there, in my house. Interesting that amongst the four brothers, I was the only one that never sang in public. I was, was the only one that was shy. You shy? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that about you. It's true. So when did you actually break through that shyness? Well, we're talking about Parnosa. Yeah. Right. Parnosa, when I got married, I had several different jobs. Really? First of all, I was a diamond cutter. You cut diamonds? Yes. What is that, with the little loop? Thank God I wasn't good at it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, see, that's another amazing thing we learned here a few times tonight, is that every time you fail, that's a chance for another opportunity. Huh. Yeah, well, I, I actually, I was good at it, but I didn't have the patience. I was, was, I, was, I was young, I got married when I was 18, and to sit by the thing the whole day and quetch in the bank, you know, it's not, was not my thing. Uh, I had several interesting jobs ever since. Please share with us some of them. I was working, uh, there was a big hardware store on 13th Avenue where the OTB is today on 41st Street. Yeah, right. a big OTB, not, not 42nd far Street. from PTEX's uh, offices. Right. There was a big, big hardware store called Tiff Tuff. I was schlepping boxes, displaying stuff on the shelves. I had to bring a Parnassa to my family. This is uh, something I never knew about you. Hey? <laughs> I'm not I'm embarrassed to say that I worked for a living. He listened to it and he said, uh, said what? what are you singing? And I said, man, nothing, just one of my songs. He said, what? He said, very nice. Once I heard that he liked it, I played him a few more and he said, why don't you do an album? And that was the farthest thing from my mind. To record an album was like not, not in the dimension of, of thought. But he kept on repeating it. And I said, Yichonish can get for them. So to Geld, don't worry about it. There have been bumps in the road or times when 
either you wanted to retire early or you decided maybe another business opportunity came up. Did you ever think of leaving singing and trying something else? Interesting question. Uh, I was touring a lot in those days, like a few years in, into, the, into my uh, career, whatever you want to call it. To they my, call it a career. My, my singing thing. Zahiri even is a career. And we had, uh, we had a series of five concerts in Europe. I was in Switzerland, in, in London, in Manchester, in, uh, in Antwerp, and in Paris. Five concerts. And in those days, you know, nobody can afford a manager. It was, you know, we tried to make the milk it as much as possible. It wasn't, it was, it was not, uh, there was no space for anybody else to get involved. You made me up to $250. So I did, <laughs> I did the, uh, the, the airline tickets, and I did the bookings and the contracts, and the, uh, I made sure everybody had food, and everybody had a hotel room. And you sang too? And I had to sing. Did you drive? Nebuch, I would say. Uh -huh. There's a few thousand people watching. Just <laughs> I'm, I'm saying the truth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he, uh, he decided that he's a composer and he's a singer. Both. Not, not only that, but he came to me with a tiny one day that I stole one of his songs. <laughs> <laughs> that happened to me once. You stole one of my so, songs too. <laughs> so, I said, so I said to him, can I hear it? Can I listen to it? But obviously in his ears and his mind, one day he comes to me, pulls me over in shul and says, I, I recorded a few songs, I want you to listen to it. And please tell me the truth. So he takes me into, into my car, and I'm listening to his songs, and it's like, Mom, there's no shaykhs whatsoever. To music? To anything. Okay. <laughs> so, I, so I said to him, I want to tell you, I'll be very honest with you. You came to me for my honest opinion, I'll tell you my honest opinion. Not everybody's born to be a singer. Oh, wow. So the next morning he comes to me in shul, and he says to me, you know something, I think you're right. You know what? Whatever I invested into the songs, just pay me whatever I paid for. <laughs> <laughs> so there is a way to make Parnassa. There's always a way to make Let me tell you something. If you, if you followed my albums over the years, you see that I was always looking to, to in, for innovation. I was always looking for new stuff, for new styles, for new creativity, basically. Right. And that's... Uh, and Siata is the main ingredient. Always. Don't ever forget that. Never. So anybody that's looking for a job for Parnassa, <laughs> going after his own inner feeling, like the, uh, the, 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 the young said. man said before. Remember one thing, it's all from the Rabbani Shalalim. I was schlepping boxes, displaying stuff on the shelves, I had to bring a Parnassus oh, to my family. He says, this thing shouldn't go into this thing. I like to have this thing, you know, connect to the other, you know. I have a, a small in the heim, you know. It should, it should go... Um, uh, when you're you know what I mean? set up internally for the client, automatically you'll be successful and the ads will help you gain more. people do business with you because they do business with the person that gives them the highest level of certainty. We're so in it, we're doing it, doing it, doing it. We never have time to say, let me, let me, let me step back a second. Let me see what I could do better. Okay, what could I'm I delegate? Going deep, deep into, into the the go all the way deep. All, all right, right I feel the winner's neighbor. There you go. <laughs> okay. And now, okay, we got to call him. I can't say who the winner is. I got to call him. Okay, ready? Oh. Oh, this is so... Uh, this it's a cell phone. Is Hundreds of, of mishpachas that are able to um, not just bring Shabbos and not just uh, pay their mortgage and rents, but really build strong, healthy lifestyles because they, I mean, I As a therapist, people come over to me and people would ask me, tell me, what's the secret of Parnassa? How do I get to be successful?